Hey guys, welcome back to the Struggleville YouTube channel. You're looking at a GM Ecotech 2.4 engine and I got my check engine light on and I checked the code. It looked like it's the camshaft position sensor. You may also hear it called an oil control valve um, for the exhaust camshaft on this vehicle. So in this video, I'm going to show you the code that's coming up, how you check the code. Um, we're going to test the sensor or whatever and um, replace it if it's faulty so I'm going to show you how to do all that and um, if your problem is with the intake sensor they're right next to each other it's basically the same process this will apply to everybody um, anything I mentioned in the video there will be a link down in the description uh, below and we get the joy of doing it outside in the snow because we got toys in the garage so Let's check this code and see what we got. To check the codes to see what's triggering your check engine light, if yours is on, you're going to need an OBD2 scanner. This one's from Farm and, or Farm and Fleet, Harbor Freight, and uh, it's, this one's actually discontinued. They have more expensive ones now, but I'll link to one on Amazon because it's basically the same and it's uh, cheaper than what Harbor Freight has now. So this works for pretty much any vehicle and... Uh, I don't know if you can see down there, but the port to plug into is just under your dash. You'll be able to find it. Just match the one to the end of this thing. So when you plug it in, you're going to turn your key on and then hit the enter button, which is going to do the scan. It's only going to take a few seconds, and you can see I already have mine pulled up. And 7E8, E7 E8 engine is what comes up. So if we hit enter there. Here's your code, P0013, so if you have something different, that's what you're going to do some Google searching on to see what that code is, and it says B camshaft position actuator circuit open bank 1. So after doing my research, it's the exhaust uh, camshaft position sensor, actuator, uh, oil control valve, whatever the hell you want to call it. Uh, that's what's causing my problem. I've had mine for a while, but if this is the first time you're reading the code, um, I would suggest going to... Um, let's go to the previous menu. Almost all of these things can erase the codes. So I would erase the code and then drive your car around for 5-10 minutes and see if the check engine light comes back on or not uh, to make sure that you're still experiencing the same problem. Um, symptoms wise for my car at idle, it stumbles around a little bit, has a misfire and from what I read it can cause uh, you to have worse gas mileage but I don't pay enough attention to know that. So. I'm going to show you how to get to that ice falling off the car. I'm going to show you how to get to that camshaft position position sensor, show you how to test it and then we will change it. So, it's really easy. You don't need too many tools. Um, pretty much if I can do it, anyone else can do it. So, let's go ahead and get into that. All right, we're back at the vehicle. The first thing you should do technically is disconnect your battery because we're messing with some electrical stuff. Um, we're just going to pretend that I did that and then the other thing I wanted to mention is you may be getting other codes, uh, the P14, P10, P11, all of those can trigger the same, either the intake or the exhaust um, camshaft sensor. And since they're right next to each other, just so you know, um, this should be the, basically the same process and even testing them is going to be the same. But let's get into this. The first thing you need to take off is this, I can get it for you, sorry it's really hard to see the screen. That clamp right there has got to come off. So that's what we're going to do first. It's either, I believe it's an 8 millimeter, or you can use a screwdriver, but we'll try the socket first. All right, the second one you have to take off is a little bit trickier. We're looking right under the front here. If you can see it. Uh, hang on, let's reposition over here a little bit. Let's see. Well, it's right down there. There's a hose clamp. We're going to take that off. And it's basically the same thing, 8 millimeter. All 
All right, and the third and final thing you have to take off to get this box on top off, it's just a little vent hose, a little breather. That's right on the side there, right there. And it just pulls off, so let's get that. All right, then all you have to do is wiggle this a little bit and hopefully it pops right off. All right, we got the little box off. The one thing I didn't account for is these two little posts. It just pulls off, but they're holding it on there too. So the next thing we need is get this little engine cover off and you're gonna have to take off your oil cap for that. All right, once you pull that off, you see besides the oil cap, there's just a few of these. Let's see if we can get it on the camera. Oh, also, you'll have a mouse nest if you're like me. So if you see right there, there's that little post right in the middle. And then there's one right there. They just pull off, but that's what's holding it. So let's get the mouse nest out of there because uh, I don't really want to play with that. All right, we got the mouse nest out of there. It's a good idea to put your oil cap back on, just so you don't have crap fall down there. And then the sensors we're looking at are right there. It's two with the little caps right there. Hopefully all you need is a screwdriver. We're going to disconnect the electrical connectors first, and then uh, normally you would test them next, but it's cold out, so I'm gonna take mine out and test it inside. You don't need it plugged into anything to test the, uh, we're just testing ohms, just the resistance, so. Let me get a screwdriver and uh, take care of this. I think some bastard used my screwdriver as a pry bar. I wonder who that was. All right, now remember, or maybe I didn't tell you yet, huh, the one closest to the fire, firewall, farther back, that's the exhaust, that's the one I'm working on. The front one is the intake, and that one I'm not messing with, but same process, basically just remember exhaust is back, intake is front. Okay, so I got the exhaust one off, the one in back. Uh, it's hard to see because it's actually facing the firewall a little bit, so we'll just demonstrate or talk about it as far as the... Um, intake one is to take it off that little beige colored uh, plastic thing there's a tab right in the middle I'm trying to aim at it with my screwdriver you need to push that in and then the beige plastic whatever thing comes up and oops just looks like that and then once you pull that off there's the little black button right here and you're just gonna push that in and pull up and you'll get the connection disconnected now this is the part where you would go test it i'm going to take it out first and then test it so now we need to take it off and it's just one bolt that holds it down here at the bottom if we can get to there we go it's a 10 millimeter bolt each one has one bolt holding it you're going to pull the bolt out uh take the bolt out and then just pull it off but you see all this crap in here that i'm thinking i can thank the mice for i want to get that cleaned up because this is going to be an open hole to your engine um and a little oil is going to, it's going to make a little bit of a mess you're going to have a little oil with it but uh, i don't want that stuff falling into the engine compartment so for me i got to clean this up real quick and then we will uh, take out the sensor Alright guys, so here's the camshaft sensor. We got it out. Uh, what we need to do next is test this one and I'll also show you what a new one uh, tests out and what it looks like. And then we're going to put it back in, we're going to clear the code, and then we're going to take it for a test drive and see if the check engine light comes back on. Uh, and while we're doing the, check, uh, doing the test drive, I'll share with you guys some uh, kind of amusing ordeal I've been dealing with while making this entire video. Uh, once you get the bolt out, to take this thing out, it's a little stiff. You can see there's just an O-ring right there that holds it. But you're going to want to probably get some channel locks or some vice grips. And that's what I had to do and just kind of wiggle it a little bit to pull it out. But just so you know, the bolt's the only thing that holds it in place. So other than that, it's just your uh, effort of getting it out. So we're going to use a multimeter here. This one came from 
Harbor Freight. It's another discontinued item that I apparently have a lot of. So I'll put something uh, similar in the link down below if you need to buy one. But all we're going to test is, if we can get in there, there's two little probes. See those? And it doesn't matter, positive or negative or anything. We're just going to test the resistance. It should be between 7 and 8 uh, or thereabouts. But So anyways, we got this thing. So you got the middle port. It says COM for the negative, and then that little goofy ass horseshoe is the ohm sign. So I'm just going to turn it to ohms. And if you notice, it's, it just reads 1 when these aren't connected to anything, right? So you're just going to get one probe in here. I actually can't see it on the screen, so you'll just have to trust me. Get one on one side, one on the other side. And you can see the meter's not changing at all. It's just reading one the entire time. It's it's open. There's no resistance at all. So through the magic of the internet, I can bring you in a new one that I was already purchased. I figured while I had this apart, whether that was the problem or not, I was going to change it because it's not terribly expensive, and I don't want to do this twice. So now if we can get the probes on here. And it's working its way down, so we're at 8. Oh, I slipped off. But anyways, you saw what the difference was. Obviously, it wasn't just reading 1. A good sensor, it was 0 .008 on the scale I'm on. So 0 .008, um, which is right in line with what the specs should be. So all we have to do is now go throw this thing in there, put the bolt on, hook up the electrical, and see if uh, that fixes our problem. So let's go out there and do that. So we got it installed. See the bolt back in place, got the new one there. All we have to do is hook up the electrical and uh, make sure when you put it in there that it's seated all the way. So give it a good push and a wiggle and uh, you guys should be used to that. Just stick it in the hole and uh, tighten the bolt down. So and we just got the little electrical connector. Push that guy on there. All right, once you get that on there, don't forget to put it on your little clippy clip on just like so. Now we just got to do everything in reverse. Put the uh, cover back on, so take off your oil cap, get the cover back on. Again, it just sits on those little posts. It's kind of nasty in there. Anyway, so let's go ahead and do that. Don't forget your little breather tube. Don't smash it underneath it or anything. All right, got the oil cap on, the first cover on. I just need to slap this bad boy on. Remember you got the hose clamp up front here, the one over there, and the breather. And then you're also connecting to those two prongs in the back. It goes right to these right here. So let's do that. All right, we've got things all buttoned up. So let's clear the codes and take it for a test drive. Got the scanner plugged back in. We need to clear out the code, so turn the key on. Wait for my radio to come on, so I'm gonna have to turn that off. Hey, it stayed off. Okay. So all we have to do is hit the scan. It says two codes found. The only one we're, we're worried about is this 7E8 uh, seven, eight, seven e eight engine. The other one doesn't actually say anything. So, anyways, we got the same code, right? We want to erase. Erase trouble codes, are you sure? Yes. Erase done. Press any key to continue. Okay, so we're all set. Now we can start it up and take it for a little test drive and see, man, look at all the dog hair on me, damn dogs, uh, and see if the light stays off. So let's do that. You'll have to excuse my shaking as I try and hold this thing going down the road. So I've gone about, I don't know, eight, ten minutes or so, and as you can see on the left side there, no check engine light back on. Uh, it seems to be running pretty good, so hopefully we got the problem fixed. As I said, all the links will be down in the description below if you need the camshaft position sensor. Uh, 
Uh, I'll try and put a link for the intake and the uh, exhaust side. One thing to note is the only difference that I can tell from the two is the exhaust has black plastic on the top and the intake has gray plastic on the top. Otherwise, maybe there's something internal that lives, works differently or whatever, but when you're going to buy new ones, if you're not sure if it's the exhaust or the intake, that seems to be the way to tell on um, what was it already installed on my car and the new one that I bought. So there is that. Uh, so that wraps up the video. For those of you who just want to know how to test and change out that camshaft position sensor, I am going to chat here for another minute for anyone who's interested just to see if this uh, if this light comes back on. So thanks for watching. Give the video a like. Subscribe if you're already a subscriber. I'm sure more stuff is going to go wrong with this car, my GMC Terrain. So as things go wrong, if I can fix them myself, I'll be sure to do a video and hopefully help some people out uh, with fixing their car. So. With that being said, guys, I was looking up some reviews or some posts online when I was researching exactly what this was because as you saw from the code it says that it's the camshaft position sensor but there's two of them <laughs> so when I saw that it was the exhaust side and I saw the ohms that it's supposed to register at I saw people talking about taking this to a shop and the quotes they were getting and the quotes I saw were between $400 and $700. Now, depending if you're buying a GM direct replacement part or an aftermarket part, you're only spending maybe, what, like $50 bucks on this thing? Let's just say for an average, you're spending $50. And you know that the dealerships are getting it way lower than that. Probably half the price or even cheaper. So it's really, man, it's almost robbing people. As you figure it probably took me if I wasn't making this video it probably only took me a half hour to do which by the way I gotta tell you my ordeal um, I had to go through while making the video and sorry if you can hear the ice rattling around on the windshield but I can't do much about that right now but it probably would only take a half hour maybe 45 minutes to change this thing and even if they have a shop rate of 80 or a hundred dollars how do they justify a $700 bill for this or even a $400 bill I just it's awful you really have to do as much of your own mechanic work as you can because they will just pants you every time you step foot on a dealership or a mechanics shop man it's just disgraceful what they'll charge people so on to my little story you'll notice towards the end of the video I wasn't really showing you guys what I was doing anymore. It was more, okay, this has to be done next, and then the video would cut, and okay, now I got that done. The problem I was having that ended up making this video take me basically all day to do was I actually think my phone was freezing. Um, and probably more specifically, the battery. It was fully charged when I went out there, and the phone just kept turning off by itself. And of course, you're in the middle of doing something. I'm not looking at the screen. I have no idea that I it turned off. I'd go back to it. It wouldn't turn back on. It, would, it was just like dead, like nothing. I went inside, plugged it into a charger. And after a few minutes, it turned on. And then I'd realize it didn't save the last video I did. So in some instances, I had to actually put stuff back together just so I could re-record the video and take it back apart. And I think that happened three times where I didn't realize that it stopped recording. And I, the reason I think it was just freezing is one, I've never had it happen before. But two, every time I brought it inside, plugged it in, and it warmed up, I'm assuming, it was fine. And when it would turn back on, it would say it's at 70%. It's at 80% battery life. And I just... So anyways, that made it for one hell of an ordeal for trying to do this video. Um, but yeah, it was really cold out. I'm glad I got it done today. We're supposed to be getting 8 to 12 inches of snow starting tomorrow. So uh, if I didn't get it done today, it was going to be a while. Because could you imagine trying to do that with trudging through a foot of snow as you're doing it? It was awful enough today. I mean, it's not bitter cold out. It's about 10 degrees out. But it's cold enough that I didn't want to do that. 
So, anyways, guys, as I talk, still no check engine light. It seems to be running fine. I think we're all set, good to go. Thanks for watching. Give the video a like, subscribe. Uh, as I said, I'm going to do more of these videos on this GMC terrain. Um, I specifically have to do the rear lift gate because it won't stay up as if you've been watching my videos, you've seen me holding it up a few times. I already got the one shock ordered. I didn't buy the power actuator or whatever they call it. Cause that damn thing's expensive. So I'm hoping the cheap normal shock will fix the problem. So we'll do a video on that first. And then if that doesn't fix it, I'll buy the damn actuator and change that. I'm really trying to avoid that. I think I saw it, it was like 160 or $175 just for the damn shock on the back of the, ugh, makes me sick. Anyways, thanks for watching guys.